Hello, this is Horam Nasir and you're watching Optometry with Horam and in this video we are going to learn about another technique of dynamic retinoscopy which is called the knot retinoscopy. In the previous videos we have learned every inch uh, about the static retinoscopy. We have discussed about the skewing, sweeping and straddling techniques of the static retinoscopy. We have also learned about the shears method and MEM method of the dynamic retinoscopy. Uh, the link is in the description you can watch if you want and specifically in this video we are going to learn about the knot retinoscopy which is actually the technique of the dynamic retinoscopy right so you know very well that di in dynamic retinoscopy we are nothing to do with the refractive errors in dynamic in every strategy in every technique of dynamic retinoscopy we are not going to treat or manage refractive errors in dynamic retinoscopy either it is shears method either it is MEM method either it is not retinoscopy either it is Bell's retinoscopy we will treat only the near problems of the patient like the lead of accommodation like the lag of accommodation like the near diplopia like the near headache near blur right we are nothing to do with the reflective errors when we are dealing with the dynamic retinoscopy so we have another technique of dynamic retinoscopy which is not retinoscopy right so Let's start the knot retinoscopy, which is actually the technique of the dynamic retinoscopy. And uh, remember that uh, the distant correction should be there before the patient's eye, before you are dealing, before you are starting the dynamic retinoscopy, right? If patient is required uh, the spherical lenses, put that spherical lens. If patient required cylindrical and correct axis, put that cylindrical power and axis. The distant correction should be worn before the patient's eye. This is step number one. This is step number one. This is very important. The distance correction should be corrected. Number one. And now the distance, first of all, uh, before that point, uh, remember that there should be a card which is held, which is placed on the retinoscopic head. Right? There should be a card which is placed on the uh, retinoscopic head. Right? And there should be 20 by 20 or 6 by 6 notation the optotypes which is having size of 6 by 6 or 20 by 20 20 by 20 mean in feet and 6 by 6 mean in uh, the meters right you know very well and that card will have uh, the optotypes having the same size as the last line of the Snellen chart and now the distance between the patient's pupil and that card that the card on the head of the retinoscope should be 40 centimeter another important thing the distance should be 40 centimeter you know very well that in static retinoscopy the distance the working distance is 67 centimeter always right but this is dynamic retinoscopy this is not static retinoscopy in static retinoscopy we correct our refractive errors right but in dynamic retinoscopy we do not uh, correct or manage our refractive errors so the distance will be 40 centimeter and why 40 centimeter because that 40 centimeter is actually the reading distance the reading distance not working distance the reading distance of the patient right so that 40 centimeter is actually the reading distance of the patient so the retinoscopy the distance between the retinoscopic head right and the patient's pupil should be 40 centimeter right i hope you understand and now we will perform our retinoscopy from 40 centimeter and from 40 centimeter you will see that either there is with movement inside the patient's pupil or against and remember that if you find at 40 centimeter if you find with movement you will neutralize that with movement with moving away from the patient pupil you will put your retinoscopy away from the patient and if you find against then you will move closer to the patient remember that this is surprising that in any type of retinoscopy we always neutralize with the movement with the help of the plus spherical lenses right and we always neutralized against movement with the help of the minus spherical lenses right in plain mirror effect but in this specific type of dynamic retinoscopy which is not retinoscopy we are not going to touch any spherical lenses and now we will prove that why we should move closer when we see when we observe the width movement when, why we should move away from the uh, patient when we observe with movement and why we should move closer to the patient when we observe the against movement right so first of all we will prove that thing so if you observe 
at 40 centimeter if you observe with movement then why you should move towards the patient right so remember that for example you are actually mindful about that formula d is equal to 1 over f so for example the distance is 40 centimeter right so at 40 centimeter let's find out the dioptric value g is equal to 1 over f so f is equal to the distance between the patient and the retinoscope that is 40 right so we need our resultant value in centimeter so we will make 100 over 40 right so 100 over 40 is equal to 2.5 right so the dioptric value is 2.5 so at 40 centimeter the val dioptric value should be 2.5 but at 40 centimeter we are having with movement so it means why we are having with movement we are having with movement if you find with movement it means that your patient is under correct under accommodative right there is deficiency of plus power inside the patient eye right so at 40 centimeter there should be 2.5 but at 40 centimeter we are having with movement which is actually representing that we there is deficiency of the plus power right so for example the deficiency is 1.5 diopters so at 40 centimeter there should be 2.5 diopters of accommodation but patient is having 1.5 less than the 2.5 that's why he is having with movement right so let's put this formula again in terms of this 1.5 so d is equal to 1 over f so we already have this supposed value 1.5 so the formula will be 1 over d f is equal to 1 over d right so 1 over d d is equal to 1.5 so we want our resultant value in centimeter so we'll make it 100 over 1.5 so 100 over 1.5 will be 67 centimeter so that with movement will be neutralized at 60 centimeter if dioptric value is 1.5 so at 40 centimeter the dioptric value should be 2.5 but we find with movement and to neutralize that with movement we move away from the patient and we move away from the patient and when we reached at 67 centimeter our with movement was neutralized and you know very well when we will convert this 67 centimeter into diopteric value the value will be 1.5 right so at 40 centimeter the value was 2.5 and movement was with and when we move away from the patient's pupil to neutralize that with movement and when we reached at 67 centimeter the patient was neutralized and when we convert this 67 centimeter into diopters the value was 1.5 so now we will find our lag so lag is 40 centimeter minus 67 centimeter so at 40 centimeter our value was 2.5 and at 67 centimeter the diopteric value was 1.5 diopters so we will subtract that 1.5 from 2.5 and the answer will be 1 diopters and you know very well that up to 0 0.5 uh, the lag is normal any normal person will have 0.5 of lag which is normal right but our lag of accommodation is actually more than 0.5 so the rest of the 0.5 is lag of accommodation so this is how we find the lag of accommodation and now we will find that why we move closer to the patient when we will find against moment right so again at 40 centimeter the patient we observe actually the against moment right and what does it mean when we will find against moment when we will find against moment it means that patient is over accommodative right there is excess of accommodation inside the patient's eye right so distance correction is there and at 40 centimeter we uh, observe the reflex inside the patient's pupil and we find against movement and why we find against movement because patient is over accommodative against movement mean over accommodation right so distance was 40 centimeter and d is equal to 1 over f the same formula and d is equal to 1 over 40 
100 over 40 for centimeter and the resultant value should be 2.5 at 40 centimeter the dioptric value should be 2.5 but we are having against moment which is representing that there is excess of plus power inside the patient there is excess of accommodation inside the patient's eye right for example that excess of accommodation is 4 the plus power should be uh, 2.5 but at 40 centimeter but patient is having more than 2.5 how much more for example for example patient is having four diopters patient is having four diopters so let's put this four diopter in the formula so formula is d is equal to 1 over f so we have d diopter value so the formula will be like this f is equal to 1 over d so 1 over 4 100 over 4 and the answer will be 25 centimeter so now again at 40 centimeter we find against movement why against because patient was over accommodative right and at 40 centimeter there should be of dioptric value or accommodation of 2.50 diopters but we find against movement it means that the, the accommodation is more than 2.5 so to neutralize that against movement we will move closer to the patient from 40 centimeter to uh, 35 centimeter then 30 centimeter and when we reached at 25 centimeter the patient was neutralized that against movement was neutralized and at 25 centimeter the value was when we convert that 25 centimeters into diopteric value the diopteric value was four diopters right so four diopters was the diopteric value so it means that there is a lead of accommodation so four at 25 centimeter and at 40 centimeter the value was 2.5 and when we will deduct 2.5 from 4 and the answer will be 1.5 so there is 1.5 of lead of accommodation so lead of accommodation is 1.5 diopters so this is how we can find lead of accommodation and lag of accommodation uh, in uh, with the help of the not retinoscopy so briefly we'll learn about the lead of accommodation and lag of accommodation right so if you find uh, there is a lead of accommodation uh, so the first form of lead of accommodation is actually uh, the excessive of uh, accommodation right? so excessive accommodation means that you required your required value of accommodation is plus two and you are having more than plus two this is called the excessive accommodation right like this uh, will we have learned about so if you find any excessive accommodation or spasm of accommodation if you have what is spasm of accommodation if you have prolonged excessive if you are facing prolonged excessive of uh, excessive of accommodation that is called the spasm of accommodation right and to treat that spasm of accommodation or excessive accommodation uh, you will uh, discontinue your near work for some period of time and then you will uh, relax your ciliary uh, muscle or ciliaris muscle right with the help of the cycloplegia uh, like the cyclopentolate or the atropine and you will put the cycloplegia uh, like the atropine or the cyclopentolate for four weeks or more than the four weeks and if you find the lag of accommodation as we have learned about the lag of accommodation is actually uh, the lag mean deficiency right there is deficiency of the accommodation you requ your requirement for accommodation is plus two but you are having plus one this is called lag of accommodation so with the help of the not retinoscopy you will find out the lag of accommodation and when you will find that lag of accommodation you will deduct the normal lag which is 0.5 from that no, uh, lag total lag of the power and rest of the lag you will uh, prescribe uh, for near addition so that was all about the not retinoscopy in the very next videos we will come uh, with another exciting videos on optometry with me with Horam.